All right, so sorry for the weird setup where I have my phone sitting here, but I'm gonna try to sync up this video and that video and see how that goes. So I had a student ask earlier about markers. What, what do I get? Uh, I don't know, what, what, are you, what do I use? So I wanted to go through some markers I happen to have laying around and then um, kind of go from there. So right off the bat, the two big hitters are gonna be Copics or Copics, whatever you wanna call them, and Prismacolors. These are probably the two heaviest hitters in the market. Problem is, they're really expensive. I only have one Prismacolor laying around. So um, this is pretty simple. They have hundreds of colors. They have a chisel tip, and they're gonna have a bullet tip or fine tip at the other end. I don't think they make the metal ones anymore, so this one might be really, really old. But regardless, um, these are like the go-to markers. So Copics, these ones are my really big uh, one inch wide ones. And these are great because you buy the refill and you can fill these up. And I've had these for a couple years and these are like maybe three bucks to get a refill, maybe 350. These are like six. So it just makes sense to keep getting these guys. And these guys, this is a gray one. So I just filled it this morning. But this is a gray number one. And this is a number two. And these guys are really cool because obviously you can do big, giant swashes of color. Um, these are a ton of fun. I really, really enjoy these a lot. These are expensive though. They blend together really well if you have a blender and you're on the right paper. I'm not. I am just on some mixed media strap more paper, but they're really, really killer for that. Also, um, if those are really expensive, these are horrible. These are Blick Studio. And these are basically like the Prismacolors, but really cheap. They have a nice brush nib on one side and they have the chisel tip on the other. The problem I've seen with these is that they run out really fast. I have them in my classroom and they go like instantly. So that's the struggle. They're really cheap, but they are, I don't know, they're, I struggle to love them. Next to my arsenal, I have the Tombos. So these are really cool. They have a brush nib on one end and they have a little bullet regular marker nib on the other end. They're cheap. The ink is really good. Uh, the ink is also water soluble. They also have a blender, which I haven't used a lot of, but you can shove colors around really easily with these guys. Let me get some more of this yellow orange in here. And you can do some pretty good blending with these guys. And that's with the blender. I also dig if you have a brush, uh, water brush. Get some water going in here. Uh, you can make these move and groove because they are water-based. Which is really, really nice. If I go up to here, nothing's gonna happen to these guys. Those are alcohol-based markers. Let me try that. Those are alcohol based, and this is water. Which means these are also pretty cheap. Uh, $1.60 maybe at Michael's online, that kind of thing. They got some fun colors. I like to use the grays. I use this on my artwork all the time. Here's a little urban sketching scene. And I use these markers for the grays in here. I also do the pre-underdrawing with them. Some of the shadows and things I use these guys. This one's awfully dark. That's a 45. That's 65. And then 75. And then 95. I barely use 95. 
And what I'm saying by 95 is on the barrel it has the numbers. So those are great. Next on my list for grays, I have Windsor and Newton brush markers. These happen to be warm grays. So these are Windsor and Newton. These are warm grays. This is a number three. This is a five. I don't know where my four went. Here's a one. So apparently I only have the odd numbers. There's the four. You get the idea. But these are really cool for uh, blending, for uh, shoving some colors together. These are really, really good for that. And they last for a long time. I've had this set for, I don't know, two years and it got me all the way through Inktober as well. So these are wonderful. I love these things. I think what got mixed up is Windsor and Newton also makes these watercolor markers, which I've had varying success with. They're really, 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 really uh, juicy with the colors. But I've had an issue with them not working very well on certain papers. These look like they're working pretty good on this paper. But some papers I've seen, they, yeah, it does this weird muddle thing. Like it doesn't want to go anywhere. So these I've had meh results with. Love these. Faber Castell Pit Pens. There it is, pit pen, I have no idea what the pit stands for. These are India ink based markers. I got this really cool set from a friend of mine as a thank you gift. What's cool with Faber-Castell is that this number here, so Pale uh, Geranium Lake 121, also matches their colored pencils too, which is really cool. These pit pens happen to be brush tips. They stay wet for a little bit, so you can shove them around, but after about 30 seconds, they shouldn't go anywhere. They make them in giant sizes too, or same thing. And they also make them in a bullet tip as well, which is what this white one is here that I've used before. Works great on toned paper, which is pretty cool. Everyone recognizes these guys, plain old Sharpies. You can get them everywhere. What I like about Sharpies is that the colors are actually really close. So you can do some cool blends with these. Move this up. You can, eh, that yellow's a big jump. But these really aren't. And it is kind of impressive. So you can do some cool things with sketching. I can always do like a light, I can do a medium, and I can do a dark over the top of it, which is pretty cool. So I always dig that. Plus I got a 24 pack for like, I don't know, 15 bucks or something. That yellow seen better days though. Last on my list. These guys here, the Unipasca paint pens. If you can read Japanese, that's what that says. That's these guys. You guys might have seen me using these on everyone's water bottles. These are literally paint and a pen. So it'll write on anything. <laughs> it'll stay there. I like these little guys for drawing. They have a little metal nib on them, but they're pretty stellar because once you put them down and they dry, it does not go anywhere but um they come in many different sizes and colors and they're not that expensive and they're really quite good and i've used these i, I drew on my mother's golf cart i've drawn on students water bottles and they still have the same pack so they haven't gone anywhere in a while so that's kind of like a quick little thing with um markers there's a ton depending on what you want to do from water soluble ones, to super permanent ones, to watercolor ones, to grays, to cool grays, warm grays. There's a ton. So um, 
I would say I encourage you to go try and play, but they can be pretty expensive. So what I might do is try to think what your end result's going to be. Do you want to be some super duper marker artist? Do you want to just add some grays quickly for something? What do you want to do? From there, I would go ahead and try to figure out what you want to do with the markers. I would start with the Tombows. That's these guys. They're cheap, they're fun. If you get a water brush, you can blend them like crazy. Um, they're really, really kind of fun. The pit pens are really nice. That's these, but they're really permanent. So they're kind of tough to do blends and things. Once you put the color down, you can see right now, I, I put this down a minute ago, it's not going anywhere. So it's just kind of whatever, whatever kind of floats your boat. Hope that helped. Um, let me know if not, I can dig in my desk drawer for some other things or my shelf up above with a bunch of other markers and things as well. Cool. We'll see ya.